The illustrious Jabba bids you welcome. I'm going to regret this. I'm Pete Mitchell. He's Peyton Jones. And this is the Church Planner Podcast. Brought to you by Church Planner Magazine. You know, when I have a large project at home, sometimes it makes sense to do it by myself. But other times, I actually save money in the long term and have a much better solution if I use an expert. It's really not that much different with church planning. Church planners who focus on building their core team and actually planting the church and partner with portability experts like Portable Church Industries hit the ground running. Yes, you may have to raise more funds up front, but let me tell you something. If I could go back in a time machine and do one thing different in all the churches that I planted, I would go back and have invested that money in Portable Church and all of the super cool kit that they give you to make the volunteers and their lives much, much easier. Trust me, your volunteers will feel invested in, and they're going to give you more of what they got. And That time where people are setting up is going to be a time where it sets the atmosphere for you to thrive. If you're thinking about launching in the next 6 to 36 months, we encourage you to check them out at PortableChurch.com. Welcome to the Church Planner Podcast. I'm your co-host, Pete Mitchell. And I'm the other co-host. I'm Pete Mitchell's co-host, co-host, Peyton Jones. And this is going to be another great car cast episode where Peyton is cruising around Southern California and I'm stuck in an office. It's what I do. Hey, uh, that seriously is a long commercial. Like the more I hear it, the longer it gets. I know. <laughs> I need to redo that. I, 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 I seriously need to read. Can I redo it as Yoda this time though? I think you should. Uh, here's a little something from Yoda. On my commute to work, I am listening to a church planner podcast. I am. <laughs> and and what, what 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 makes us so honored that Yoda would listen to us? To you, Pete Mitchell. Happy birthday! It is. Pete Mitchell is my pastor. Wise in the use of the force. He is. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, it, it's actually very similar to the actual um, way that they used him in the film. Um, it, it really never is. Before his Yoda sounded so much like a Muppet. Yeah. In, in this film. Yeah. Well, this I is. I mean, they actually made Yoda not cool. I, I don't want to get ranty yet, but, you know, today's topic is leadership, church planning leadership lessons from The Last Jedi. Oh, and we have them, let me assure you. Can we call it The Last Pastor? <laughs> I said it in a menacing tone, kind of like the Phantom Menace. It was it was a little bit tinged with the dark side. Yeah. Got any more Yoda quips? Let's play the another podcast time. is all around us. It moves. Through us, luminous beings, are we? That is why you fail. Plant or plant not, there is no try. Those were our Yoda ones. Those were so good. Who did those? (laughs) This is one of my favorites right here. Church Planner Magazine. I'm pretty sure that's Tyrone doing Elmo. Oh my God. Church Planner Magazine. <laughs> you oh got to join God, the Bible so Inner funny. Circle. Learn more. Um, 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 All right, you ready for this one? Uh, Elmo, yeah, but like, should we have him on the podcast? And, like, didn't Elmo get into some discretionary problems? You've got to join the Bible Inner Circle. Learn more at BibleInnerCircle.com. Go now! <laughs> mm, 
I'm not sure Elmo's a reputable endorser anymore. I'm just saying. I find your lack of membership disturbing. Oh, that's a really bad Vader, by the way. Dude, who was that, though? It sounded good on my end. I have no idea. Do not underestimate the power of the Bible inner circle. Yeah, that one was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. Now, if you're the guy who did that for us for free, that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I am Thank old. you. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. That was awful. Whoever did that one shouldn't shouldn't ever pretend to be Vader again. Uh, I believe that was James Earl Jones. Oh, uh, never mind. That was great. I liked it. <laughs> Did you uh, did you see the tweet that I tweeted today from uh, it was emo Kylo Ren? No. Yeah, it was uh, Dear Diary. Today I took off my shirt and waxed and oiled my body, hoping that someone might mind call me, but nobody did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you that that movie was horrendous. It really was. Oh my gosh, dude! I keep thinking so like. Very, you know, Church Planner Wales tells me you should go see it again because it's better the second time. You know, whenever someone says that is a reason why a movie should not be missed for its brilliance, that's usually a dead giveaway. But uh, it's funny because I was walking around the other day. We did our salty rant. <laughs> but I actually, a couple of days later, we did it on Monday. I woke up Tuesday and I told Andrea, you know, I'm angrier today about that movie than it was two days ago. And that's kind of, <laughs> it's like, it's like how they tell me it'll grow on you. It's like the, the slow burn. Oh, it's the slow burn. All right. It's been burning for a week now. And uh, the longer it burns, the more upset I get at this movie. And yeah. I want to talk today a little bit about why. And I want to pull some leadership lessons out from The Last Jedi. <laughs> I don't know. That almost redeems the movie. It, well, you know, hey, 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 if we can't take a bad Star Wars film and make a podcast out of it, what hope is there for the universe, Pete? Um, I wish I had Princess Leia going, you're our only hope, but I don't have that sound clip. <laughs> Help me, Church Planner Podcast. You're my only hope. Don't do that. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Before before we get into that, I think we need to have a little section where Pete talks guns. That's what we should call it. Pete talks guns. You know, I was just thinking this week that, you know, you let me talk during most of it so that you can have that little window of time to talk about cars, underwear, guns. So I was laughing this morning thinking, this is Pete's moment coming up, you know, where he's like, hey, I don't care about anything. As long as I get my little, you know, my time. So here it is. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, for those of you who don't know, we live here in the great state of California. And California has has uh, been known to be uh, not entirely friendly towards uh, gun owners. Um, has really nothing to do with anything other than they just don't like people who like guns. Probably one of the reasons why they don't like me. But uh, in in California, starting January 1st, you are no longer allowed to buy ammunition online and have it delivered to you. You have to buy it and have it delivered to basically a store, and then they can charge you a fee, and then you got to go pick it up from the store. And then, yeah, it's because they don't, I don't, I don't know what it's because, I mean, all I know is starting January 1st of 2019, you have to have a background check in California to buy ammo. It's getting like really, really uh, anti, anti wow. bill of rights here. Wow. So Big brother's watching you, my friend. I know. So I had to stock up on my ammo, right? Until I can get out to the gun show. And uh, so is that kind of like in case, like, you know, one day we have a revolution and they're like, oh, House uh, 7581. It only has sixty two bullets. Is it is it that kind of thing? Or like, you know, I mean, what, what is it? You know, I, who who knows? It's California, man. They just they wanted they want to discourage we you. Like, 
from owning. We like rules. We're the, the government. We like to give you rules. They want to discourage you from, uh, way, from owning. If something goes wrong, you can't blame us because we ain't enough rules. They're going to keep going until they're the only ones with guns and people have none. I'm convinced of yeah. that. You know what? That, that, but that is our country's history. Oh, it's uh, it's the history you know, of the world. 1776, but I mean, hey, if you want to go back to our roots, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's the history of the world. You got to disarm the people first. That's one of the reasons why most nations are afraid of attacking the U.S. There's 300 hey, million hey. weapons in the United States. <laughs> They're like, hey, everyone what? there's got a gun. The, uh, the reality is that uh, Hitler's, um, and you know, I'm not a gun owner, but Hitler's army the uh, Third Reich was a much better trained army um, than, than ours was. However, we were a nation of hunters. And because things were a lot more rural back then and everybody owned rifles, it was kind of easy, you know? The, and that's a well-documented historical observation um, based on World War II. Mm. The people had firearms. They had rifles. They hunted. They, they knew back in the 1940s and 30s, that was just a way of life. You'd, you'd hunt stuff. So I ordered a substantial amount of ammunition. <laughs> Let's just say substantial. And I kid you not, it literally came before we started recording the podcast. The FedEx driver pulls up to my house in a U-Haul truck to deliver all my ammo. Not the a FedEx truck. He was not. He, he had too much ammo. He they gave him his own truck. They rented him. So he like, was wearing his FedEx shirt. That bad boy up was it? Was it like you know, like some arms dealer had like you know? <laughs> it might I be mean, because what, it's. What did you see inside? It might be because it's December twenty second as well. <laughs> they just ran out of trucks. But I like to believe that it has uh, to do with all my ammo. Merry Christmas, honey. I got you these bullets. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so I was at the range yesterday and uh I was uh um I'm gonna I'm gonna be really careful how I tell this story. I was testing out a new firearm, shall we say. Uh one that's only legal in two states, and this isn't one of them. Just kidding. Actually, what movie uh, is that from? I'm uncomfortable right now. I'm uncomfortable. I'm can, just saying I'm Can you name the movie that that's from? That's a nice gun you got what? there. It's only legal in two states, and this isn't one of them. Do you remember that movie? No. no. It's a no, John Candy movie. movie. Is that from? It's a John Candy movie. It's the one where he's a security guard. Do you remember? I can't oh, remember. I don't what, know if I saw that one. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, it was a great line. It's only legal in two states, and this isn't one of them. Well, anyway, so I'm, I'm testing out this gun. Now, here in California, we got all these crazy gun rules, and one of them is if you're going to have certain features on your gun, you have to have a fixed magazine. So you can't just you know, drop the magazine out and pop in a new one, which kind of makes the gun unsafe if you have a jam because you can't get out all of the other ammunition before you work on the jam. So I'm firing this this gun, new gun, never fired it before, and literally all of a sudden I get a double round jam and I, I can't drop out the magazine. And I'm I am literally scared because it's the first round which means the whole magazine is full and i'm like oh man dude how do i fix this i can't drop out the magazine i can't you know disassemble the gun because of where the bolt's at and i had to go get the uh the the range officer because i'm like man i don't i don't even know that this can be fixed like i don't, I don't know what you do when you got a situation like this w what do you do call the bomb squad let them blow up the gun i have no idea right so i i call the uh uh, the the range officer over and he's like, oh yeah, you got a double feed. Oh, you got one of those uh, those uh, fixed magazines. And this guy looks like Santa Claus. He's big. He's got a big white beard. He's he's and he's just like this total gun nut. And he, I kid you not, man. He just pulls out this knife and he's like, oh here, let me get that. And like two seconds later, he's cleared the jam. And I'm like, oh, okay. That was kind of impressive. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, that there's some guys who know some things about guns. That's all I'm saying. They just know some things about guns. Pretty crazy. Oh, I was on mute, and I had the best comeback. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I said, now it's going to lose its impact. I said, nothing like an old guy to show you you're not a man. Dude, I, I don't even feel like a man next to that guy. Oh, you know, that, when a dude does something like that, you're like, I remember when uh, the contractor hung a towel rack that actually stayed on the wall in my bathroom. I was like, oh, that's what that looks like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, I like, as soon as he did it, as soon as he did it, he's like, oh, yeah, here's, here's another way you could have cleared it. And I'd like totally forgotten. I could have like taken the bottom off the magazine and dumped all the bullets out on the ground. But I like, I, I was literally like, oh, crap dude i got like two live ammunition rounds jammed in the gun i i was just i was like in full panic mode man because i'm a new gun guy right i i don't have the gun experience of many of our listeners did you hold your gun in the air and go ah, ah <laughs> like that for the guy only yeah, while i was shooting it be- only while i was shooting it <laughs> <laughs> do you ever when you're on the gun range bend over and stick it between your legs and shoot <laughs> from behind, like as if you know, like on the movies, or like under your Dude, legs. Dude, I don't do it any other you. way. <laughs> do you do you do you say things like "pow" and "zing"? You know, like that would be. <laughs> did you ever turn around and do it over your shoulder with a mirror? Because that would be the way to go to the gun range in style. Hey, I gotta show that old guy that I know what I'm doing. That's right, man. Or you do it like this. You go, ah, and you scream while you're emptying the magazine. <laughs> and then when you run out of bullets, you dramatically reach in, grab a knife, and throw it at the target <laughs> so it sticks in the head. I will say this. I do have a nice red sash that I tie over my head, or I tie it, you yeah. know, like a headband and hang it off to the side. Dramatically. I, 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 I'm that trying to look rad. as much like I can. Like Sylvester Stallone from like Rambo. Rambo. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what I'm going for. Truth be told. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I did notice you were looking a bit firmer. Well, you know, uh, the exercise bike, uh, uh, <laughs> spinning class. <laughs> <laughs> spinning. Is that like tumbling class for adults? <laughs> I don't know, man. There's nothing more less manly than spinning class. That's all. Can you imagine if you showed up at your next meeting and they're like, oh, you're looking good. We're going, why? Well, I joined a tumbling class for adults. <laughs> That'd be rad. We should do that. So when I start my ninja school and like we start teaching people how to throw weapons like ninjas, we're going to add like ninja tumbling class in there as well. It's going to be so cool. That should be like the freebie, you know, to get them in, get them hooked. Sign up now and you'll get a bonus of ninja tumbling for adults. And then you upgrade them to ninja stars, throwing stars, knives, swords, the yeah. black arts. And then, and then, and then ginseng nice. Is it ginseng? No. No. What are the ones? No. Dang. Not ginseng. Like I know what you're talking about. You but know, wait. There's more. Ginsu yeah, knives. One, the ginsu. Yeah. At two in the morning, you so want to buy those. I need those knives. I'm not I saying I watch there, TV yeah. at two in the morning, but I am saying I got about three dozen sets of those. Hey, man, I have bottle fed two children. That's how I discovered the Tim and Eric awesome show. Great job. That's actually the title of the show. It was on at 3 a.m. because it was so bizarre and weird. But, uh, dude, seriously, like, I, I, you know, there's you want to be able to cut your shoe with a knife, like Jerry Seinfeld says, at 2 a.m. I need to buy those. <laughs> so there you have it. So you need to teach people how to fight with Ginsu knives. I guess so. Like the whole set. I Use guess so. all seven so. blades to the terror of your enemy. I don't know why this podcast has digressed. If you're new to the podcast, you're already gone. <laughs> so this isn't your first time. You know what's coming. We get into the topic, but this is what we call smack talk. I always feel like we have to like kind of explain, half apologize. I know you do. I sure don't. <laughs> I have seen our listening numbers go down, though. Dude, I am not at home, and uh, I think someone's got, like, Def Leppard on, like, rocking the neighborhood out like it's the 80s. Nice. So I had to roll up my car window. I like so it. it. Yeah. So, listenership went down, huh? Yeah, it did. It did, unfortunately. From four to two? Gosh, dang it. I hate <laughs> when that happens. Um, I actually, call them. Actually, it went down from four to one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't listen this week. <laughs> 
your, it's your fault. We should actually get into our topic. So why don't you, uh, why don't you do our second B roll uh, sponsorship and get us into the topic? Well, how to start this commercial? Gosh, hey, hey, church plan. Yeah, you. <laughs> Can we make this one even worse? Oh yes, here it comes. I'm hey, not church only the heck of president; I'm remember? also a client. <laughs> Hey, Church Planner, you looking for a place to meet on a Sunday morning and you think that schools or community centers are your only option? Well, stop it. No, just joking. That was your commercial. But, uh, hey, why not go where people are already trafficking? We're going to talk about movies wait, today. We're going to talk about what? theaters. Wait, what? Hmm? Oh, you got to be careful how you say that. When you said people are already trafficking, my mind immediately went to human trafficking. I'm like, what? Well, well no, 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 not that kind of tra- – I mean, like, where they – where they go where human no that didn't sound right where people frequent church planner magazine (laughs) we're going for the gold on this ad aren't we we? really are so why not go where people already are and one of those places is movie theater this past weekend people went to the movies in record numbers so why not be there where they're already at? Hey, Regal Cinemas will make a deal with you as a church planner. In fact, they've got a team of four church planners on staff that literally will get you into a Regal Cinema to plant your church. The place you go to is corporate box office forward slash theater, and that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E dash church. Check it out, corporateboxoffice.com forward slash uh, theater, T H E A T R E dash church. <laughs> we got ba, 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 church planner magazine. I think that's just the sound bite after we really screw something up. From now on. From now on. That's the sound bite. So let's get into leadership secrets of The Last Jedi. <clears throat> okay. So, you know. Here's the thing. I was trying to kind of give my um, my take on it. You know, last week, if you listen to us, Pete and I gave a spoiler filled review, and it really was a rant. I it mean, was we were. It I was the worst movie of really, 2017, no doubt. It was definitely the worst movie I saw, except for some of the Hallmark movies that my wife made me watch this year, and that's saying a lot. Right. Actually, it would be a toss up between a couple of Hallmark movies and that. Now, here's the thing. People, in, in fairness, last 10 minutes were kind of cool. Um, more spoilers coming here. But uh, part of the coolness, it just seemed like at every point where Ryan Johnson could have had something super cool, he made it just a little bit cool. So Luke's scene at the end where he's taking on all of the, the ADATs would have been radically cool if Luke was really there, right? Well, because Luke would have probably um, killed all the ad ads. He would have taken them all out. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and the he thing did, is, he is took out an ad ad before he was even a Jedi in, in Empire Strikes Back. Absolutely. And Darth Vader deflects a laser beam like it's nothing. So Luke would have no problem as powerful as he's become. Um, he's powerful. And, you know, he, he could he could probably withstand all that. I don't think anyone in the audience would have been upset if Luke was really doing all that stuff. And it just seems at every point where he could have zigged, he zagged. You know what I'm saying? He just made wrong turns, throwing the lightsaber over the shoulder when it was so built up in episode seven. Um, So many of the things, Ray's parents, it was built up powerfully in episode seven to just strip it away. It was almost, I I know if you've seen the, the shots, of Mark Hamill before the premiere, he's as giddy as a kid. He's all excited. If you see the shot of him and Ryan Johnson in an interview afterwards, he looks like he's about to cry. He looks so upset and and so distraught. Um, the theory is that uh, Ryan Johnson kept from him that his character dies. Oh, because if really? You go up to how they killed him. You saw from a distance the cloak fall down. They didn't even need Luke to film that scene. 
So it, it's very possible that Mark Hamill didn't know. Mark Hamill made a statement this week, and this is the first leadership lesson that I kind of want to build off of. Um, Ryan Johnson, or Mark Hamill said, I don't know. He goes, I still maintain that a Jedi would never quit. But he said, but that's old school, and this is the new generation, which is kind of a, a backhanded slam to um, the postmodern generation. Where, and, and technically, we're postmoderns, but that whole idea that, uh, you know, like everybody's, and nobody has a hard time with the fact that Luke just wasn't there for anyone else. He, he wasn't there for the next show. Oh, he was hurt. You know, he was, well, you know, there's a caliber of, of men and women out there that they just don't quit and they keep going. And when things get hard or things get discouraging, they don't just pack up and run away. They stay. That's mm -hmm. why Paul told Timothy, um, he told him not to abandon his post. He said, endure hardship like a good soldier. Um, Paul had people leave him left and right. He had, he, he actually says, you know, I, at first, uh, all forsook me, none stood by my side, all fled, but the Lord stood by me. You know, there's a, a, a leader, a stalwart. The, the reason that people become leaders is because there's a strength of character in them normally. And I mean, real leaders, I'm not talking like people that have enough money to get voted into office. I'm not talking about people that can manipulate things. I'm, I'm talking people who by the strength of their character, don't have anything else going for them, but people want to follow them. That's character. And that's what Paul points at as really the number one reason that people uh, should follow somebody like an elder. So I want to talk a little bit about Luke's character today and, you know, how character is the strength. When people ask me, what's the number one quality of a church planner? Um, when I search the scripture, I find Paul continuing to exhort about the quality of endurance and, you know, staying at it, sticking at it. And then the next thing is handing down to the next generation, which, um, remember, this is part of my rant. Um, I don't think I said this last week, but um, part of, of, I think, what really disappointed uh, me personally um, was that in this film, we who watched Luke get mentored by Obi-Wan and then by Yoda could not wait for the next generation. I don't think we cared if everybody died. I don't think we cared if there was a new generation coming. Nobody cared about that. I love these new characters in episode seven, but what we couldn't wait to see was Luke being a trainer, Luke taking the mantle and the role of a mentor, of a master, and becoming the sensei or the teacher who would pass down and train the next generation so that it could be their fight. And that's a biblical principle. And I got to say, as a trainer, uh, as a trainer of leaders, as somebody who has spent really the last 20 years handing down to the next generation. I mean, in my very first pastorate, I was discipling young guys for the ministry, many of whom are, are in ministry today. And so for me, um, that whole idea that we would lose that, that made it disappointing. But, but this is where I think this generation, and Pete, jump in if you want, because I, I know where I'm going. But um, if you want to, uh, if you want to jump in and do something, you know, say yeah. something, go for it. But you want me to talk yeah, about guns yeah, again? Yeah. Well, well, if you have any thoughts on this, but you uh, you, you want me to talk about guns know, again? In. Guns? No. Guns? No. no Star Wars. <laughs> you talk about the guns? No, I'm listening but to you. Leadership lessons. Okay, so. So here's, here's one of the things I think we need to be uh, worried about. This was clearly a postmodern film. And our culture right now is in a postmodern place. Now, I, I think in many ways, I'm a, a, a product of postmodernity. So are you, Pete. I mean, a lot of the reasons I assimilate pop culture and um, kind of see everything as sacred. I don't see the secular versus the sacred divide. Um, 
but I'm very old school in the sense that I do believe that there is kind of the Augustinian tale of two cities. There is the kingdom way of thinking, and then there is an earthly way of thinking. James calls it heavenly wisdom versus demonic wisdom. There's a lot of different ways that the scripture puts this, right? But the spirit of the age right now is such that in postmodernity, you you actually feel that it's arrogant to in any way mentor or to teach somebody something. So for example, like right now in the church, we've got coaches and I'm a big advocate of coaching because coaching takes, it, it's different than mentoring, training, or teaching. What coaching does is it says my role, if I were coaching you, Pete, is to help you hear the Holy Spirit. My role is not to tell you what to do or to replace the Holy Spirit. And I totally get that. Like, there's value in that. Coaching is good. However, it's one part of it. Um, if what I'm doing is helping you hear from the Lord and asking you questions so that you can kind of realize what God has already been saying to you, great. That's wonderful. That's coaching. But mentoring, sometimes you do just need a mentor. Sometimes you do just need somebody to tell you certain things. What do you see? Or can you help me improve on this? So, for example, if I hired a golf instructor, um, Tiger Woods, I wouldn't want Tiger Woods to just ask me what I think I should do. How did that feel to you? You know, how do you feel your swing was? I would want Tiger Woods to say, let me tell you where you went wrong here. That's mentoring. So mentoring is also valuable. But this generation, part of postmodernity is the belief that, well, it's arrogant for me to think I have something to teach you. And this very strongly came across in this film where um, a postmodern approach to being a Jedi came across. So in other words, Luke's not going to train Ray because that's not what we believe in or value as a culture. We actually don't value what older people have to pass on. R.C. Sproul, who just passed away, spent his entire life studying Luther, uh, you know, soteriology, philosophy, um, different systems, and he condenses it and consolidates it and hands it on to the next generation. Walter Martin spent his entire life studying the Colts, going to Brooklyn uh, headquarters of the, the Watchtower, going to Salt Lake City, meeting with the prophet, um, reading the scriptures, gathering the different um, editions of the Book of Mormon and Doctrines and Covenant, Pearl of Great Price, so he could show the false prophecies and distinctions and, and convert people from Mormonism to Christianity. <clears throat> and he spent his whole life studying that so that he could condense it and kick it down to the next generation. The Apostle Paul spent his whole life doing things, modeling them, championing the grace of God, and he wrote epistles, condensed what he knew in his learning as a Pharisee, and kicked it down to the next generation. And yet here we see in this movie, we see that, uh, oh, well, you know, mentoring isn't really important. Ray will find her own way, right? That's, that's what she's left to do. In fact, any force sensitive from here on out is left to find their own way to simply just well just there's do the what books feels right to you there's the books what's that there's the books the books were interesting now the books were uh i don't believe that the books were to say that she was necessarily going to get mentoring i think it was again what i just said the spirit of the age is to be self-taught not to look to the wisdom of anyone else unless you say well the books you know they're 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 her uh reading the wisdom of others but I actually think what Disney did with that was they said, hey, anything you thought about the Jedi before, we have an older codex, an original source material predating the Jedi. Ha <laughs> ha. Right? Like, we can do what we want, which is cool. Disney bought the franchise. They have every right to say, hey, we have the Bible of the Jedi here. That's great. That way they can invent things like people flying through space in, in force trances. I mean, they can... They could invent from here whatever they want. Now, it will not be Star Wars anymore. It'll be more Star Trek than Star Wars, which I would maintain this movie was. But again, partially because we 
have shifted now from a modern movie to a postmodern movie. One of the ways that you see that clearly is, for example, during whatever planet that was where they had the, the space rabbit horses, um, at, at the, at that whole scene, uh, even though they fail in their mission, that's okay because Finn and Rose at the end of it, uh, Finn says, well, I think it was worth it now because they freed these animals. Never mind that they didn't free kids, right? Kids are in slavery, but it was worth it because they freed the rabbit space horses. And which again is very postmodern that people kind of suck and, you know, the animals are kind of the deal. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, Rose says she takes the harness off the animal and says, no, now it was worth it. Never mind that the whole space fleet is about to be blown up any second. As long as we freed those space rabbit horses, it was all okay. And guys, if you're from a millennial generation, I'm not bagging on you. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I am an old guy. Um, I'm 44 years old. I came from a different generation. We came from a generation where like if we were Timothy's, we got around Paul's and we said, Hey, teach us. We didn't listen to everything they said. There's always that dynamic where the young person's not going to fully listen. That's why Proverbs, the, the father character says, my son, listen to me, heed my instructions, pay attention to my warnings. They'll prolong your life. And I don't know if you've ever been in this position where you've realized that your, uh, your mentors actually knew, but you realize a little bit too late. You know, and Proverbs plays that out. But I remember saying to Andrea once with Peter Jeffrey, I got off the phone and he was just saying, well, remember how I did tell you? And I said to Andrea, if Peter Jeffrey ever tells me anything again and I don't do it, which was like 100 percent of the time, I would normally he'd tell me something. I think, yeah, yeah, I know better. And the Bible says that's just foolishness. Right. Wisdom is found in the multitude of counselors. But we would get around people in our day and we would ask for mentoring i still to this day ask for people to mentor me and i know pete you've had a bunch of mentors yourself oh but absolutely this generation, it, it's the shortcut you see it in the marketing generation it's yeah, the shortcut it the, the shortcut generation. is someone else has already experienced all the hardship and they know the path why in the world do you want to right. go discover it on your own why right that doesn't make any sense right which, which is kind of what you do, like in Bible Inner Circle, I'll eavesdrop on the, um, you know, the Platinum Bible or the, the business consulting side of it. What's amazing to me is these guys are nonstop asking me stuff because you've got, you know, decades now of experience in this field. And what, what's interesting is when I listen to guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, who are like, you know, guru mogul marketers, um, what he'll often say is he'll say, you know, these guys that come up and they're like 22, 23, and they're going to tell you how to do everything if you buy their program. He goes, but they've, he goes, but show me, where's the multi million dollar company that they started? Right. And that they ran and they sold. And, and so what this generation is doing right now is it's a little bit of a hustle where you're being told, hey, I know all the secrets, but there's no wisdom there. There's no experience experience what it is is it's 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 a bunch of smoke and mirrors and there's not there's not the respect of the generation who went and and did these things that these guys are claiming they can do but they've never done does that make sense you're seeing a real contrast and i think it came out in this movie you know you, you know me pete i look at everything missiologically i'm always looking at things sociologically you you frequently would chide me like, hey, you're, I think you're reading too much into that. But that's what I do. I can't help but analyze this stuff. And I and I noticed very much a shift in the spirit of this Star Wars, which I'm not against, as long as it's things that are going to be helpful. As a leader and as a trainer of leaders, I watch this. And like I said, after a couple of days, I told Andrew, this movie makes me even more angry as I go on because – this isn't what Star Wars is based on. Star Wars is actually based on very biblical concepts. Um, they didn't come from the Bible, but a lot of the wisdom found in Star Wars is actually quite biblical. You would say the same of Lord of the Rings, although that was very much based on Tolkien's Catholic faith. So that's one of the things is that there's this idea that people are just going to find their way, you know, um, you know, you see it in Leah. Leah 
finds her way. Um, we never have any indication that Princess Leia has ever had any Jedi training at all. And yet what she does is she puts a force field around herself that completely uh, she doesn't put a force field around her. I can't let you just start making up stuff because it fits. She didn't put well, a force okay, field around so, her. So what did she do? It was a stupid movie. <laughs> she didn't do anything. There was no well, force field around her. Well, this is this is part of the problem with the movie, right? The movie doesn't tell you jack. You're you're just left to figure stuff out kind of in an embodiment of its postmodern spirit. Oh, you'll find your own way. You'll figure all this stuff out. Yeah. It's what you want it to be. Leah did whatever you wanted. Leia. To all we know is it's not Leah. Leia. Come Leia, on, Boba Leia, Fett. Leia. Princess Leia. Princess, Princess Leia. Leia. It is Leia. I don't know why I'm saying Leia. Neither do I. <laughs> What's up with that? What's up? It's not my Princess Leia. Hashtag not my Leia. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag me too. Oh, no, you did it. But here's the thing, man, is that, uh, you know, there was just so many things like like that where suddenly Leia is able to do these incredible things that mirror what Luke could do after decades of studying the Force, practicing, training, training others. Leia can do something that rivals his end scene, and that is the spirit of the postmodern age. And Really, in, in many ways, every generation kind of struggles with this to a certain extent. For example, um, you know, the hippie generation knew so much better than the World War II generation that raised them. Um, so they became the hippies. And every generation since, we thought we knew way better than our parents, right? And, um, and, and each generation is guilty of doing this. But, but again, there is a shift. There is now a shift where you don't seek out mentorship from others and that guys the reason this is important for you as church planners is multiplication is so much about discipling training and mentoring the next generation and and the reality is is if you're not careful um the next generation will resist this and you have to let them know you have to let people know when you're mentoring them i'm mentoring you like you know, I'm training you, I'm teaching you, um, because that is a two way street. So for example, if, if, if Ray had showed up on the Island and said, Hey, uh, Luke, here's your lightsaber. And he goes, right. Meet me tomorrow morning, lesson one. And she didn't want training. She wouldn't have shown up the next morning. Right. right? She, she wouldn't, you can't force training, training and mentorship is always a two way yeah. relationship you have to have permission to mentor somebody yeah no i i agree with you a hundred percent i mean i was having this conversation uh i think it was last week via email with a, a client of mine um she's worried about her son you know her son just graduated college he got his first job in financial planning he's struggling she's like ah here's his phone number here's his email you know i've told him he should reach out to you and he just won't do it. He's too proud. Will you call him? And I reply back to her. I go, you ever heard the phrase, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear? I go, no, I'm not calling yes. him. I'm not emailing him. He obviously doesn't want any help. And you want it for him more than right. he wants it for him. It ain't going to happen. Right. Not until he's ready right. for it. So, you know, but it's because what you just said is 100% true. I mean, Ray has to show up. She's got to actually do her part. And if she won't, I have this happen all the time with guys in the Bible inner circle. They're not, they won't commit. And I'm like, why do you expect me to do something more for you? You won't take this thing and do it. You know, you, you got to be yeah, the one. Absolutely. You got to be the one. And in each, in each uh, episode, other than um, Star on Star Wars, it was a little bit different. Like Ben's waiting for Luke. He's been, you know, he's been strategically placed. But when Luke goes and seeks out further training from Yoda, he's got to work for it a little bit. And, and, and that's quite right. The idea that you have to work for the mentor to train you is, is actually, it's, it's true. Like any kung fu film you see, you know, the, the, the mentor is going to make sure that they're, that they want it bad enough. So Yoda initially says, I can't train him. He says to Obi-Wan and, 
Bobby talks him into it. And then he says a couple other things and he says, you know, um, he's, he's too young. And Ben says, well, you know, I was pretty young too. And on and on. So you've got those dynamics going. And, um, what, you know, I don't have a hard time with the fact that Luke was like, Hey, you know, I, uh, yeah, I'm busy, you know, I'm, I'm doing things, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, and, and, and I kind of thought at the beginning that Luke was just kind of seeing how bad she wanted to be trained. But when I got to the point where I realized, no, Luke won't train her. And then he doesn't train her at all. I was, I, I can't even tell you how disappointed I was to see really, is that, is that what this generation and is that was contemporary culture? Cause no one had a problem with it. And and like I said, man, this is my life doing this. I mean, I do this in my sleep. So do you. And the, the difference is I do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Pass on what you've learned. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh, I've learned that. Oh, that that's a very good lesson. I've learned that uh, people who pay, pay attention, man. If you go to, I remember giving jump school away for free and, uh, giving it to everybody who, you know, was a church planner or a missionary or whatever. And, um, and I, I could track like whether or not people had logged in and used it. And for every single person, um, it, it, if we gave it to them for free, they didn't go through it. But the people who were paying were moving through the content. Yep. And I remember you tell me in the beginning, Hey, this is how it works. They got to work for it a little bit, Peyton. They, you, it's got to cost them for them to value the training. It's, it's got it. There's got to be a little bit of a, a, of a pain point. And it was, a, I remember, you know, kind of like, Oh no, I know better. Right. Which we all do, which is why we need mentors and trainers. Cause we all know better. We're all the exception to the rule. Um, you know, Luke, Luke's told, Hey, don't go and face Vader. You'll fail. And he knows better. I got to do it, you know? And, and, and we're all like that. And, uh, but I remember seeing at the end, you're like, Hey man, I, I look, I told you, and that was a great way to learn a lesson. But had I not had you mentoring me in that, I wouldn't have learned that yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's why I tell people, people who pay, pay attention. And what, the more they pay, the more they pay attention. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's true. Like the, the, and I've said this before to the platinum guys, I go, the guys who take the most action have the best results are the ones who are in platinum. It's the most expensive program, but it's a totally different commitment that you're making. Like, yeah, it's five grand, right? So it's like, man, if I'm going to do this, I got to do this. And it's, it's totally different from, uh, from them as opposed to other people. So just saying, well, and here's the thing guys, like, honestly, when, when we set out to this podcast, uh, Bible inner circle wasn't in any way, shape or form, in my mind, this was really actually something I felt like almost kind of like a burden. Like I got to get this out because I, it's cool. If you like the movie, like I got no issue. If you liked it, if you liked it, great. I'm really happy for you. If you thought it was a rad star Wars film, I wish I did. Right. Um, Cause I'd be happy walking around thinking about it. Like, Ooh, can't wait to see that again. But unfortunately that's not where I'm at, but more important to me, like I said, mentorship discipleship is such a key to multiplication discipleship itself involves mentoring and training in the faith so if i see that being attacked like that that's like i said maybe i overanalyze things but if i see that being the spirit of this generation that no one can teach or train or mentor anyone else then then we are going to be in big trouble right? Mm. The, the rebel Alliance will not win. The empire will be victorious. And I'm speaking purely in spiritual terms here because that is the secret to our success. That is what will actually turn the tide right now is the older generation like RC Sproul, Don Overstreet, all the guys we talked about last week who say, you know what, until the day I die, like the apostle Paul, until I breathe my last breath, I will continue to pour into the next generation because I don't have it all figured out, right. but I can save time for you. I can kick back the wisdom 
that I made. You're going to make your own mistakes, but don't make the same mistakes I made. Here's what I've learned. Let me pass it on. You go further than me. And there is that brilliant line in it where uh, Yoda says, when we're masters, and of course, this is an empty line in the film because Luke's never been a master, right? Like other than when his Jedi school failed and he gave up, he stops being a master. But Yoda says, this is the burden of being a master. We are the thing that they grow beyond. That's what we want. We want them to stand on our shoulders and reach higher than we've reached. That is the hope because this is for Christ. It's not for us. Right. And um, in saying that, guys, um, the reason I say this as well is if you're a young church planner, the burden is upon you now to start handing on to the next generation because my generation that generation of us that are old school Star Wars fans, we're dying, right? We are dying. Your generation will pass the torch, or will they, right? It's up to your generation to pass the church, to pass the torch. And by the way, the reason that we have in the church either dark ages, like we have in times past, or we have um, generation gaps in the church, and I talk about this in Church Zero, cha-ching, is because one generation, it only takes one generation to fail to hold the torch out to the next generation. It killed me when in the movie, Luke says, I didn't read those books because I thought that's not the Luke Skywalker I know. Luke Skywalker I know would have not only run straight at Snoke and been like, hey, bring it on. You're not taking Kylo Ren from me. But number two, if he did retreat, it would have been to say, I'm going to go study those books, find out everything I can, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to crush Snoke. And guys, that's why you study to show yourself approved, that you would rightly divide the word of truth. You know, right now, theology, uh, R.C. Sproul has gone to glory. One thing that dude did was he passed on a legacy of truth and intellectual persuasion uh, and really the, the, the logical foundations of the Christian faith. Obviously, it's a faith, but R.C. Sproul, uh, he did such great work in that. So, uh, you know, on and on, just all these things. Like, I could go on and on about people that gave their lives to ensure that, the, you know, preaching at a revival when Spurgeon and Lloyd-Jones were in the pulpit. These men were committed to training the next generation. When I sat under Lloyd Jones's men, I was literally discipled in the theological training I got from guys who were directly discipled and trained by Martin Lloyd Jones. And I, I'm telling you the stories that where Lloyd Jones literally called them his boys, and they were scattered all throughout the UK. They were evangelical preachers, and he would call them once a week in some cases, once a month in other cases. He pour them. He'd show up to their churches. He they He'd invite them to, the, to come with him when he was preaching. He would invite them into his pulpit. He would analyze their sermons. He would pour into them. He would, you know, call them and, and say, hey, I hear you're going through a rough time in your church. And he would talk to them. People would never forget those conversations. They could quote them 30, 40, 50 years later like they've been yesterday. And, guys, that's mentorship, and it's powerful. So forgive my ranty rant here. I know I'm, I'm, I'm waxing on Pete. It's a salty rant, but, uh, needs to be said. That's all right. I dig it, man. I dig it. Well, why don't you go ahead and close this out? Wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and uh, happy new year. Yeah. Hey guys, Merry Christmas. And like Pete said, happy new year. <laughs> it wasn't very original, was it? But, uh, <laughs> from church planner magazine, hardcore church planning and church planner podcast. And from Pete and Peyton, want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas. Thanks for spending the year with us. And uh, we will see you in the new year. And with that, our tagline, if you want to reach the ones nobody's reaching, go where nobody's going and do what nobody's doing. Hi, my name is Mickey. No, not Mickey Mouse. Some random guy named Mickey with a high voice. But listen, you've got to join the Bible Inner Circle. Learn more at BibleInnerCircle.com. Dot 
Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Church Planner Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Peyton Jones. We'd love to hear your comments on this episode of the Church Planner Podcast. Visit us online and let us know what you thought at churchplannerpodcast.com. If you subscribe to us via iTunes and have enjoyed the podcast, leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive in iTunes, the more iTunes will promote us to other church planners who would benefit from this show. This podcast is brought to you by the Church Planner Magazine, which is available in the iTunes newsstand or online via churchplannermagazine.com. Thank you.